Hey there, it's Pete with GCI Turf. Hope you're having a great day today. And I get this email, um, I'm not going to call it often, but I do get it often enough where I figured it was time to make a video on it and kind of show you a little trick that I use that will help you in mixing. Uh, some things that you mix together in your sprayer to apply to your yard, they may not be chemically compatible. A lot of the times you'll hear me say, you know, don't mix that and that and spread on the yard. It's not that I mean if you apply the two together to your grass, it's going to harm the grass. That's not what I mean. I just got four products right here. There are hundreds and hundreds of liquid lawn care products on the market right now. The overwhelming majority of them, at least the ones that I know of, are labeled for turf grass and they are safe to apply to turf grass when you follow the directions on the label. I don't want you thinking when I say you can't put those two together or you can't mix those two together, I'm not talking about they will harm the turf if you apply them together to the yard. Obviously, if you use ridiculous rates and you're not following uh, instructions on the label and that kind of thing, yes, anything's possible you can damage your, your turf but I just want to make sure that the, the general thought here is when I say uh, don't mix those two together I'm not saying that you can't mix them and apply them to your grass and, uh, and no harm will be done I'm saying they're chemically incompatible meaning they will not solubilize together and, and blend and, and form a liquid solution that can actually be sprayed to the yard. That's what I'm talking about. So this is an absolute perfect time for me to make this video because I just put down my protein 12024 on my fescue. You know, that's kind of my main fertilizer feeding for the summer. And I just went out with a half a pound of nitrogen full pound of potassium. The rest of the summer on my fescue, I'll basically just kind of do some touch-up feeding, spoon feeding type applications and that kind of thing. One thing I like to go down with that pound of potassium is some calcium. I'm gonna mix in a little bit of CK with that, stress reducer, and that's the reason for those three different elements all kind of going down at the same time because I'm going into summer. Now, one thing I have never done, ever, this is completely fresh and brand new for me. And that's actually another reason I wanted to do the video on it. I wanted you to see the actual, I hate to call it live, because this isn't live, but first time results. And, and we'll see what's going to happen here. I'm going to mix Caltide, which is the calcium that I use, and I'm going to mix Green Effect. Green Effect is by, by Green County Fertilizer, 7% nitrogen, 3% sulfur, 6% iron, and it's also got citric acid in it. But what makes this actually new for me is I have never mixed these two products in the same tank, ever. This is the absolute first time I've ever done it. So I want to show you my process in, in which I go by to make sure these two are chemically compatible with each other. Sprayer calibration is extremely important. So I am going to basically take the sprayer calibration that I am using, which in this case is gonna be a half gallon per thousand. One half gallon or 64 ounces of finished solution. Finished solution would be my water plus whatever products I have in here. 64 ounces finished solution, I am going to evenly distribute that over 1,000 square feet of turf area. Instead of going all out and mixing in my actual sprayer, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do what's called a jar test, and I'm going to basically use a simple measuring cup. Uh, this is my GCI Turf measuring cup, and I'm going to create enough finished solution to cover 1,000 square feet. The reason I go through this extra step when I'm mixing two products together I've never mixed together before is I don't want to mix an entire sprayer full of the stuff and then find out it's not chemically compatible and I end up with a yucky goo 
and I waste all that product. So by scaling back and, and mixing it in a smaller container, if by chance these are not chemically compatible, I'm not wasting a boatload of product. This is based off a half gallon per thousand, which is 64 ounces. So I'm gonna put about half of that water, about 32 ounces of water. The rate I run on the cow tide is eight ounces per thousand. So that's four. That's eight. The rate I run on the green effect is also eight ounces per thousand. And really the only reason I'm adding green effect this time, it, like I said, it's all brand new to me, first time I've ever done it. I'm just looking for a little extra boost in color to darken the yard up. It's already dark as all get out, but I wanna see if I can make it darker green. So that's really the only reason I'm doing this. So here's the first four ounces. So far so good. And there's the second four ounces. You've seen me use this a hundred times. It's my little uh, mixer. I, I'm just going to take it without the drill and kind of give us a little stir. And so far so good. What I'm looking for here is any clumping, any gelling type effect. And here's the CK, I'm gonna add it in, half ounce per thousand. Give it a little stir, and you can see we're still uh, pretty good in liquid form. There's a slight bit of solids in there, and I'm thinking that's probably from the CK but it's not enough where it's gonna affect my application or affect my sprayer from working properly. And I am running this as a foliar application. So I am gonna use the natural adjuvant, the O2YS on this. And you know when you use that, you need to check the pH, make sure the pH of the finished solution is at a five or slightly below. And that is absolutely wonderful. It really couldn't get much better than that. So what if it would have been higher than a five? I would have actually added a little bit of the citric acid in with this to lower the pH a little bit. But fortunately, I don't have to do that because the solution itself already has the correct pH to be able to use the adjuvant. And this comes out to about a half ounce per thousand. And I have successfully completed a jar test because it is in liquid form, a liquid solution, and the sprayer and the sprayer pump is able to handle this and actually spray it. So I now know that Caltide, Green Effect, and the adjuvant and kelp can all go in one mixture. And what I'll do is I'll lock that in my mind mentally and I'll just remember that in the future. Now if you need to take whatever mix that you're mixing together. Uh, I don't know what you're mixing, but you know, the mixes can be endless. There's, there's thousands of possibilities. If you have multiple different mixes, you might want to write that down and, instead of trying to remember it. If you mix A, B, and C, and C, B, and A, and A, C, and E, or whatever it may be, write it down on a piece of paper in your notebook, hang it in your garage so you'll know what's compatible and what's not. I just use so few mixes. I mean, I know you see me doing a lot of things in the yard, but my lawn care program in general is relatively pretty simple. I don't use a lot of crazy, you know, mixing this and that and this and that and putting it down. I just don't do all that. You know, I've got very simple mixes and this is just one that now I can take and lock into my mind. I know that Caltide, Green Effect, CK, and Adjuvant can mix chemically correct. That means there's no yuckiness in here or nothing like that that's gonna clog up my sprayer or my filters. Now, 
let's mix something that I already know is not going to mix right, but let's mix it so I can show you what will happen when two things are not chemically compatible. So let's do the same thing. Let's start off with a little water. There's four ounces of calcium, caltide, and there's a second four ounces. And here's your little tip on top of a tip. Anytime you are running caltide or any liquid calcium, any of them, I don't care which one it is, if it has any type of liquid calcium in the, the mix, in the product, you want to always do a jar test. Calcium, liquid calcium is like that kid at school that just don't get along with anybody. You try to love on them, you try to respect them, but calcium still just don't like nobody. It's kind of like the, the bad guy at school. He don't get along with other people. He don't play well with the other kids. That's the way calcium is when it comes to mixing liquid products. There's just a whole lot of you know, things out there that you're just not gonna be able to mix calcium with. So anytime you're using a liquid calcium, always do this jar test first to make sure. I don't want you wasting your product. Green pop. Now, the nitrogen and the potassium, which is the first and last number, they're completely fine. I already know they will mix with calcium just fine. The middle number, the phosphorus, is the one I know is not going to mix well with this. It's not going to play with this. And also the humic in here. Humic and phosphorus do not mix or blend well with calcium. So I'm going to show you what that looks like. I'm going to try my best to get the jug setting just right so you can see it when I pour it in here. But here's four ounces of the green pop. Ooh. Do you see that? Oh, 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 oh man. And let's get back a little bit and look at that. Look at that gooey, gunky, yucky stuff. Look at that right there. See all the little chunks of solids down in there? You can really see it good right here on the sides. It's totally and completely changed the color. It's kind of like a white, milky look to it now. Look at all the solids down in the bottom. You can see we didn't even put the other four ounces in there. It was just four ounces of the green pop to eight ounces of cow tide. Now you could do the any ratio, any ratio, one to one, you could do one to 10, one to whatever. Calcium and phosphorus do not mix in a liquid solution. I don't know if someone makes a product that those two are in the same jug. I've never seen it personally. They are simply not compatible. So keep that in mind when it comes time for you to do your aerating and overseeding. And those of you that are going to use green pop, don't mix calcium with the green pop. Just don't do it. If you're new to the spray game and you're unsure, you're a little bit worried or concerned, you're scared, you don't want to take a chance on wasting your money by mixing two products, do this procedure right here it absolutely works the 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 trick to it is you have to do it at the same ratio at which your sprayer is calibrated at if you don't know how to calibrate a sprayer go back through my channel i've got over 800 videos on here and a whole bunch of them have to do with sprayer calibration you know i'm a calibration sprayer nut i absolutely love that stuff it's not hard to find a video on my channel about sprayer calibration so i hope this video has helped you uh, I'll link up all these products in the description below, and I'll link up a whole bunch of different options for DIY sprayers. So now you know how to do a jar test. Now you know how to check the, the different products that you're using. You know, the same thing goes for herbicides and chemicals and pre-emergence and all that. Unless you've just used the certain mixes over and over and over, and you already know they're gonna work, uh, anytime you use something new, you pick up a new product from wherever, and you want to add that to your spray game always do a jar test with what you're going to mix it with it will save you some headache it will save you time and it will save you money in the long run as always i appreciate you taking time out of your day to watch i'll check you later